These are our 45 day aged, 45 ounce porterhouse steaks. We're an Italian restaurant with a big wood burning grill. Having a big cut of meat on the menu seemed a little bit appropriate. And I wanted to make sure if we're gonna do this, like I wanted it to be big, bold, and almost egregious. So I'm just gonna heavily salt it on all sides. The aggressive salt helps keep that flavor throughout the poaching process. And then it just goes in our walk-in for two hours. We've already started these and you can see like the moisture is coming out of them. This is after two hours. The redness is coming out. It's changing color, it's changing texture, and then all of that's going inside. After this step, we kind of brush all this salt off. We then poach them in butter before service. You're not trying to like sear the steaks off in the butter. You're just trying to do a light poach. You're just looking for it to be about 90 degrees. This is a true Italian sense, right? We, you know, Bisteca Fiorentina, we can't get the access to that exact piece of meat, so this is our interpretation of it. What the butter does for us is to be able to cook this at a temperature that's consistent. And we don't want them to overcook. Obviously, this is a very large cut of meat and not one to be wasted. In order for us to be able to execute them outside on that wood-burning grill, it would take an hour for us to do this start to finish from raw. First things, it's Monday morning. It's time to light the fire. So basically, when we get this going, we gotta use the kindling to get it started. Um, and then what we're gonna do after that is um, have our wood in the chamber and then move the coals over to get this middle part going. And that will be um, the center of our hearth all day long. So our centerpiece is our very large wood burning hearth. This grill was custom designed for us so that we have the ability to move all of these around all day long. Some things that do not need um, quite as direct, direct flames. Down here we cook our steaks uh, so we keep a bed of coal so they're closer to it. So we have a shoulder and then lamb bellies, all from the front end of the lamb, super fatty, super delicious. So we take these two components, we season them, we braise them, and then we roll them. The lamb is definitely our biggest um, project to tackle each week. There's so much that goes into it for the end result. Basically what we're gonna do here is take out this little bit of rib that's left here and take out the shoulder blade from the other side and butterfly it in half. So that we have a lot more surface area to sear later to pick up the flavor from the fennel and the salt and the clabber and chili when it braises. We saved these bones for the stock that we actually braised the lamb shoulder in. It's a mother stock. We've been using the same one essentially since we opened. We just keep adding to it. It's where a lot of the depth and the flavor comes from from the lamb in our lamb dish. It is really super important at this point. So we're gonna salt the shoulders, we're gonna salt the bellies, and then we're gonna let them sit overnight. So our next step after the lamb has sat overnight, with uh, fennel seed and, and salt. Um, we're gonna place it on the uh, poncha to start rendering out some of that fat and getting the caramelization on the exterior. About 20 minutes, they'll sit here, they'll caramelize. We're not rushing them, we don't want it to be super high heat. We wanna really just draw out the moisture from that fat to crisp them up. Yeah, this is like a three-day process. Nice and seared on both sides. And here's our reserved braising liquid from our last braise, and that just simply gets poured over the top. And this gets covered in foil and goes into a 350 degree oven for about three hours. Right now we're just opening it up and uh, we're gonna pull a piece out and just make sure it is tender and jiggly. Nice, tender, pull it apart. The lamb is finished braising. We start pulling it out of its braise. It's a nice mix of both uh, belly and shoulder. This is a piece of shoulder, so you can see the meat. So we're gonna leave that whole, but any of this stuff that we don't want to eat, we're going to pull off. We're going to taste this first. Uh, make sure that this doesn't need any more salt. I'm pretty good. Once they get pulled out of here, they're not perfect. There's no going back. The fat is really important. Like this kind of fat stuff is delicious. So when we roll it, we want all that fat to go with us. Ideally, this is done when it's hot. Uh, the reason why we do it when it's hot is that once we roll it, it stays together. We are binding this lamb solely by its protein uh, and fat content. I rolled it up in between two pieces of plastic wrap here. We're tying the ends so that nothing can get out again. Then I got a pair of tweezers and give it a couple pokes, squeeze the rest of the air out of it, and we're going to repeat the process again of what we just did. 
You gotta do the fling the thing you get if you're really gotta show off. Yeah. Come on. You really gotta twirl? Yeah, you got to do the twirl. Alright. You ready to twirl? Ready to twirl. Okay, so as part of the fun part about this is that we are letting gravity help us. A lot of this technique I learned making salumi uh, back at Lupa back in the day. The testas, the copas, we shoved a lot of things into small spaces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let gravity and we're gonna keep tying this down farther and farther and farther until it hits that nice tightness and then we double tie it. So it's one less thing we have to worry about. All right, so after we got our roulade, this is just uh, crushed ice covered with water, and this is what we call an ice bath. It's just merged in there, and hopefully they'll firm up within the next hour or two. When creating this menu, I was really trying to find a way of, of treating fish differently. And swordfish is a fish I love dearly, and it, it can accept a lot and can be beaten up a little bit. We portion all of our fish out prior to service. These are apportioned around between seven and eight ounces. I'm gonna grab our fish cure, which is a mix of salt and sugar and zest. What this does is firms up the fish and imparts flavor. You want to do it before service, let it hang out for 15 minutes or so. It'll tighten up the outside, firm it up a little bit so that it accepts the uh, smoke. And then once we poach it, it'll give it the opposite where it'll soften up in that side. See where the smoke's going? I'm going to watch them. So we're going to start off with 30 minutes up here. For me, I get really nervous about cooking fish on a grill without skin, there's nothing to protect it, right? It's this like naked canvas that like doesn't want to be cooked. You know, a fish with a skin, there's fat in it and there's water and there's oils that render out to create that and protect the rest of it. So here we're protecting the swordfish by poaching it in a vat of garlic and oil. Normally we would poach it, but for right now a quick tester, we're gonna just get it on the grill so that we can Keep it moving. We're just gonna give it a quick taste to make sure it's where we need it to be. So we have our testers. We're testing for smoke, we're testing for seasoning. One that was on a little bit of a harder temperature than the other. So they both taste the same. One's a little more drier, got a little bit more touch on the, on the grill. This is a great way of being able to understand what happened on one side of the rack versus the other side of the rack, um, and then bringing them together. They're ready to go. To go along with our swordfish, uh, we have sun gold tomatoes, which we're gonna be uh, smoking and drying over the grill. And then we rehydrate them in garlic and oil, and that becomes our sauce for the swordfish. So this is a whole dish that requires a lot of love and attention and a lot of smoke and a lot of time. The smoke comes from underneath, the skin uh, protects it, so it stays more of its shape and then it just dehydrates from in. We don't wanna make them like into like those like stereotypical sun-dried tomatoes. We still want some body left to them, we want them to still be a tomato, not a piece of tomato leather. It can't overpower the swordfish. The swordfish has to be the star of the show. So we have our first batch of uh, sun golds going up there to smoke and dry. Um, I would say that we'll probably do this about six more, seven more times today to have enough uh, for tonight's service. And all these coals, I'm gonna bring these over. So now we have a nice bed going over here. Once that log goes down to coals and we can start cooking on that side. It's building this whole bed of coals right here. We just keep sliding them over and sliding them over all night long. We're gonna go to the other kitchen right now, uh, up front, and we are gonna be making pizza bianca, which is one of my favorite things uh, to make in this kitchen. It's a combination of salsa verde and aioli and pickled peppers and anchovies. This is our pizza dough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this in half and then uh, these are gonna be the beginning of our pizza bianca. All right, so these guys, we stretch them out. Uh, this is a little garlic oil. I'm just gonna rub it all over here and then salt. With these, I'm gonna hit them towards the back corners to see if they get them closest to the flame as possible. They'll puff up, they'll get a little color, and then we're gonna trim the top and then retoast them again. These little crevices are great. We want those little pockets. So we make a garlic aioli with lemon, roasted garlic. This dish was based on something I ate in Piemonte, um, and it was so amazing that I, I wanted to make it for this restaurant so I could share it with everybody else. So now we're gonna take this uh, salsa verde, which is just like mustard, capers, and anchovies, and tarragon, and let it fall where it will. If it gets in those holes, that's great. And these are um, sinise peppers from the south of Italy that we soak in red wine vinegar. We rehydrated them in water, and then take the meat out from the inside and leave the skin. Oh, did you hear that noise? That was did you great. get that noise? I got that. That was oh, man. These uh, anchovies come from Spain. Look how long they are. They are just 
some of the most delightful anchovies. What's happening right now is uh, our line check. So before service, they give me all the main players. Any sauces or vegetables or vinaigrettes, uh, we taste them all before service. So if there's any problems, we can fix that right now. And it could go one way or the other way. It could be really salty, it could be undercooked, it could be terrifying at the same time. And then if it's wrong, and then we have to fix it, and we're at tables sitting down right now, it's really, it's, it's, it's a scary situation. The good news is that it's not scary today. It's quite tasty. So this is our finished lamb log after it comes out of the ice bath, the lamb roulade. And we portion it into seven to eight ounce portions. So depending on the thickness, it's usually about an inch slice. So I will double loop it twice. That kind of holds it nice and tight. The lamb has a crust and it's soft and supple on the inside. So it's creamy. And then we cover it with a celery pesto with pickled celery and pistachios. The pickled celery vinaigrette cuts that fat and it's one of my favorites. Mushrooms is two on 25, please. Swordfish is 24. All the food here was created out of something that I have eaten or seen or touched that I wanted to do again. And I wanted to share the stories and the adventures and the journey. My point was for people to leave the outside world and to come to Chisiamo and enjoy and to be transported to someplace else.